Yay. How you doing? I'm doing good, <laughs> man. <laughs> All right. Cool. Welcome to this podcast is Uncalled For. What's uncalled for about it? Oh, well, you can't tell me. Okay. Oh, my God, what are you doing? I didn't see the big deal about the human body. I worship Cthulhu just for the free beer. Yeah, I don't go to Sam's Club either. But you didn't even give a chance for a wild card spot. What are we doing? T1. You're like, what did you do, son? Well, so the name of this podcast is Stuff Uncalled For? This podcast is Uncalled For. Podcast, all right. Yeah, that was the most ridiculous ending to that game that I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up. Oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up. Oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up. We're looking at each other in the eye. We're not gonna say anything derogatory to the other person. And, of course, neither of us is drunk. So I don't hear Pope Francis saying that he's a uh, prophet seer and revelator. What planet are these people on? And they look... Thank you, Black Mountain. See, this is a disgrace. How'd that happen? Really? And it's got Chick fil A. Hey, we're getting somewhere. And now, your host for this podcast, Mike Chernefsky. Fuji! Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. And welcome to our Fringe 2021 uh, interview with uh, Patrick Poe. Patrick, uh, please go free. Feel free to introduce yourself. And yeah, so I'm a local Kansas City filmmaker, comedian, podcaster. I'm the co-founder of IX Film Productions. Um, I'm the host of the podcast Indies on Indie, and I just started a new podcast with my wife, who is also a filmmaker, uh, called First Timers Movie Club, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> awesome. Um, so we'll start with the uh, film side of things. Uh, yeah. Uh, what are some of the uh, films that you've been uh, uh, fortunate enough to participate in? So. Well, um, me and my wife, between the, the two of us in our production company, IX Film Productions, we have made, I want to say, six feature films since starting. We were 19 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, the Two of those that kind of got the most success would be Mr. Lee, which ended up screening at the KC Film Fest local showcase, as well as the Doc Sunback Film Festival. Mm -hmm. It did a stint on Amazon Prime and is now exclusively on our Patreon. And the other film would be our feature film Zoink, which is a children's sci-fi thriller comedy. And it is currently on Amazon Prime to watch if you're a Prime member, or you can like pay a couple bucks to rent it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm currently finishing up our newest feature film titled Almost Sort of Maybe, which hoping that this pandemic ends will be coming soon to mm-hmm. film festivals. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Six features, uh, I could barely manage two or three so <laughs> yeah um yeah we're crazy people and we love what we do and so we just keep creating regardless of how hard it can be sometimes yeah yeah absolutely and uh, yeah sometimes you get just right sometimes nah not workable sometimes so um yeah, I've stared myself away. <laughs> I've stared myself away from trying to do uh, features and now do like shorts and web series and of course podcasts. So, um, and talk, yeah, yeah, talk we, about, we've done. Uh... Oh, sorry. Uh, I was going to say, talk about your uh, podcast since you mentioned you do a couple of podcasts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got Indies on Indie. It's a conversation style podcast where I talk to creatives, artists of all kinds a lot of filmmakers, obviously, because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Um, And we discuss the hardships they've gone through and how they built themselves up to what they are at their time and why they make their art in the hope of inspiring other artists and creatives to follow their dreams. And then my second podcast is me and my wife. We started a podcast called First Timers Movie Club where it's pretty much just the two of us showing each other the films that we love and discussing them. So we give some context at the first half of the episode about 
why it's an important film in filmmaking history and like generally the films we watch are the films that when you go oh i've never seen that the group of people around you go how have you not seen that and so we talk about like how the person that hasn't seen it how they've avoided seeing the film why they should watch it then we watch the film that piece is not in the podcast because that would just be annoying and long and then we come back from a small music break and we talk about that person's reaction to seeing this famous film for the first time. Very cool. Uh, what are some examples of films that you've reviewed on your podcast? So. Yeah, definitely. So the first film we did was Titanic, mm -hmm. which I had never seen, even though I'm a sucker for like romance films and James Cameron in general. Mm -hmm. And so if you listen to that, you'll get to hear Lolo tell me how it's bonkers to her that I've never seen it. And then afterwards, you get to hear me bawl my eyes out because of how beautiful that movie was. <laughs> I think I've seen bits and pieces, and I don't think I sat through the whole thing. Personally. Oh, man. It's, it's gorgeous. I recommend it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I always say my two favorite movies of all time, uh, certainly the movies that inspire me as a filmmaker include Clerks and Fight Club. Definitely. De yeah, Clerks is one of the top films in my mind. I hate to give like a top 10 list of any kind because there's so many beautiful films, but yeah. Clerks is, oh man, and Fight Club is also a gr great film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had the top top ten uh, movies uh, list for this podcast, and uh, uh, spoiler to anyone who hasn't listened to it, it includes a take on the aristocrat joke. Uh, are you familiar with that joke at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't think so. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't think I know that joke. Yeah. It's the one that starts with the uh, guy walking into a talent agent's office and then uh, yeah, describes the joke and it's different depending on who's telling it, but it always ends the same. Mm. The joke, the uh, the act is called The Aristocrats. Uh, there, there was actually a documentary uh, uh, made about that joke where they interviewed all sorts of fam famous comedians uh, uh, and uh, talking about the joke and uh, uh, probably the two best tellings of the joke came from uh, Bob Saget and Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> yeah. They're amazing comedians. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Yep. The Aristocrats. <laughs> the name of that documentary. Um, uh, do you know that, uh, are you involved with the uh, Independent Filmmakers Coalition at all or? Yeah, definitely. I've been an IFC member since I was probably 18. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, for our first feature film we did, we rented all of our sound gear from them. And we could not have made that movie without the IFC. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I've been involved with IFC. Well, 2004, I want to say, was my first um, meeting with them. And I've, I did uh, serve on the board a couple of times. So. And, nice. And even though I'm not a paid member right now, I still uh, drop drop in if I can uh, find the time. And yeah, I'd probably admit that my membership's probably lapsed. I honestly don't remember, <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, I do love the IFC and what they do for our community is great. Yeah, and uh, one of several uh, film groups. Not uh, there's also the uh, Women in Film. And, uh, and Casey yeah. yeah. Um, are you familiar with uh, Casey Video Core? I have never been to a Video Core meeting, but mm -hmm. I know of it because of Alden. Yeah. Yeah. Alden's, uh, uh, Alden Johnson from time to time. I've been uh, fairly active with uh, that group, uh, if you can call it that. Uh, it's very much on more on the uh, techie side of things. So, yeah. yeah all your uh, camera guys and your uh, crew and your editors will be in this group <laughs> nice yeah 
Um, and as far as podcasting groups, you know, we have a, a podcasting group in uh, Kansas City. And as of September, I head that group. So, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did those meetings go? Well, right now we're strictly uh, online. Obviously, yeah. Obviously, uh, the next one is actually this coming Wednesday, but um, which have been long past for anyone listening on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, yeah, so far, yeah, we've had a couple of folks uh, do presentations and and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah, definitely uh, give it a chance uh, sometime. Uh, let me go on is meetup.com slash podcasting. I am typing it in the uh, in the uh, chat. So, yeah. I will uh, save that for later. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As far as my podcasting, well, obviously we're doing my podcast right now. Uh, but before that, uh, my first podcast came about in uh, December 2012. It was called uh, Sunflower Brew. And it was uh, politics while drinking beer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, uh, the nice. guy who's, yeah, the guy who started that had just lost a race for the uh, Kansas House. And I uh, was thinking, um, oh, I want to start a podcast, explore some of these uh, issues and uh, uh, asked me to come along and uh, that lasted uh, about a uh, full year. And we covered all sorts of interesting topics. Uh, and well, that was, that was a fun little podcast to get started with. I'm, and I'm sure. And then, my, and then the second podcast I yeah. did, that was the Wingside Coach no, I... podcast. And that's more, that was more of a sports discussion podcast than anything. And I've recycled some of that stuff for this podcast. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I got into podcasting just because I realized that me and all of my artistic friends mm -hmm. were having these really interesting discussions about the art that we were making and what we were working on and the hardships of being a filmmaker and independent artist in Kansas City or even friends outside of Kansas City. Yeah. And I realized that I wanted other people to be able to hear this, to know that like, we're all struggling in different ways, but we're all also finding our own successes. And I thought they could be inspiring. So I tried to figure out what was the best mode to get these conversations out there. And I immediately thought, well, these podcasts are the best way to have long conversations and post them for people. It also was an easy way to get it out there as opposed to trying to make a web series with video or anything like that. I don't have to edit it in sense of video. I just edit the audio itself and put it out. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same here. And uh, that's actually the emphasis of this particular podcast. Uh, I, uh, I hit 40 and then uh, decided, hmm, might as well uh, put everything down some formats and uh i didn't think writing was a good way to go so heck let's do a podcast yeah definitely yeah yep yeah. and uh the first uh three episodes of the whole podcast series were interviews with uh ifc people <laughs> yeah pat lamb first off the bats then trevor martin and then Adam McKeith, who I had back on the podcast uh, last year for Fringe. Nice. Yeah. Um, all three great guys, all three I've uh, worked with before. And of course, for last year's Fringe program, I had uh, Brian Boy on the podcast. Yeah, definitely. I saw that interview and mm -hmm. I was like, I need to listen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, Brian, past president of the IFC, and uh, uh, we've worked, and uh, all four of those guys have worked with uh, on a uh, couple things and everything. But, um, 
with Brian, of course, worked a lot with him and uh, the late Dave Barry. And uh, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Dave uh, still has. I I think he's a uh, one of those people looking down from uh, wherever and uh, blessing this podcast, if you will. <laughs> And that uh, I'm getting a little more, getting yeah, a little, yeah, getting a little too uh, spiritual here, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Dave definitely one of those people I think uh, had a great influence on um, my work as a uh, filmmaker and everything, and I uh, still miss working with him. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I unfortunately never had the pleasure of working with him or meeting him mm -hmm. uh, but i know so many people that i'm close with who his life touched them in such important ways and he's truly an influence in our scene oh yeah oh yeah i oh i got some i got plenty of date bear stories too and i guess i'll share a couple of them if that's okay uh, yeah um so uh, when i first um, when I first met him, he was living, it was called the sky, he called it the sky pad. Um, it was a uh, house that he uh, had uh, designed himself uh, overlooking, uh, overlooking the crossroads um, up the hill on the uh, west side there. And uh, very, ni very nice house. He shot a lot of uh, films there and everything. And then uh, Sadly, got divorced and spent uh, some time in Cleveland, of all places. Uh, nothing wrong with Cleveland. I think Cleveland's a nice town. I've been there a couple times myself. Um, most recently, 1999, actually. And went to the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that day. And, um, followed immediately by going to a, a, a football game. About 60 miles down the street in Canton. And uh, yeah, he told, told me all sorts of uh, uh, interesting st and uh, saw a couple of films he did in uh, Cleveland. But uh, yeah, the, the last film that he did, and I had the uh, pleasure of uh, helping him with this one, uh, uh, was a really goofy thing he did involving uh, pizza delivery guys and uh, a, a serial killer of uh, pizza delivery people. And there was a, a superhero vault played by Jim Schwears and it was uh, really goofy and uh, fun to work on. And that was, for the most part, the type of guy Dave was. Uh, there were a couple of things he, he uh, wanted me to do as I uh, like one involved uh, being uh, drugged to death and uh, having things done with the corpse. I was like, absolutely not. No way in hell that I gonna be doing that. And uh, I saw that particular film and wound up being one of the most disturbing things I ever saw. <laughs> so <laughs> I dodged a, a big bullet with that one. Yeah, I mean, Kansas City definitely has a reputation for putting out some really incredible horror content, mm -hmm. which I do not partake in at all, really, because I'm I'm a comedian. So yeah. all of the films I make, I make sure they're comedic. I've got a couple of films, uh, like my short film, Silent But Deadly, which is a parody of horror film trailers, mm -hmm. but I, I'm not a horror guy. I'm, I'm a comedy guy. That's what yeah. I'll always be into. Yeah, I'm not a horror guy either. So, <laughs> but uh, uh, another guy I really uh, enjoy uh, working with from time to time is uh, I've not got him on the podcast yet, but the offer is uh, there. Uh, Kendall Sin, ever worked with him? Yes. Yeah, I do know Kendall. Kendall's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I first. That Kendall Hill was doing uh, Shadow Falls, which is one of the uh, early web series. 
and uh, everything. And that was that's a little more, a little more of a horror thing, uh, everything. But what I really like about Kendall's work is his uh, comedic stuff. Uh, yeah, he did that. Um, in fact, I got to see him uh, do a little bit of that uh, Smoke Break series. 150, yeah, 150 short really episodes, all of, all of them revolving around uh, people uh, smoking and in, uh, in, at work and everything. And uh, a good uh, sampling of the acting talent we have in our town. Yeah, and, definitely. And, uh, Davis to Rock. Yeah, and, K- Kendall's uh, a great guy. Jimmy Stan. Yeah. yeah. Um, my favorite uh, Kendall film, however, is. Uh, a little short he did called mail in rebate. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen that one. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, basically, it's a candle hanging out at home, uh, waiting to hear back from this uh, company about a uh, mail in rebate he was supposed to get about something. And all this, uh probably one of the funnier scenes I've ever uh, seen where he's. Uh, uh, completely covered in uh, shaving cream. <laughs> and, uh, shaving cream ninja! Ah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Funny, fu- funny, funny stuff. Yeah. So, um, oh. hmm. so, uh, who, so, who are some of the other uh, uh, filmmakers you've had the pleasure of working with? so far that we haven't i worked a lot uh with the toddy brothers production okay yeah i I actually worked with i worked with toddy brothers productions a lot Mm -hmm. i worked with uh, sam at juco uh yeah which film uh we were in the uh, student news department together and um he did a uh uh, it's either uh, sam or richie wolf uh did a a short film involving a uh uh, it was Richie's film. Sam was the uh, main actor. He, uh, he was playing a vampire walking into the a vampire uh, Catholic one? church. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's at the yeah thing he's actually going to be drinking the blood of Christ. And then when he finds out, oh, it's wine and starts storming out of the there, there's that guy. Hey, you comes up and uh, says, that's me. That's me. I would let her rent Not, that uh, chapel. Yeah, for, no, <laughs> I would let her rent that chapel for my own, uh, uh, my own uh, web series work and uh, 75 bucks for two, for yeah, no, two they're, hours. And they're we're, absolutely <laughs> great guys. Yeah. I also know Chris Toddy. I work with them a lot and I help them make their. Yeah. I also know Chris Toddy. Yeah, Chris Toddy's cool too. Yeah. Uh, Chris, I actually knew through uh, Coda when that was still a bar. Um, I know. I don't know what it's called. I never went to Coda. Yeah. yeah I was, uh, that was like a second home during my. <laughs> when, when they were uh, still open um, and. Uh, how I, and oddly enough, this film that uh, that I found about that because I had worked with uh, Clint a couple of times on some projects. Unfortunately, a lot of them won't ever be seen, but uh, it's all good. And yeah, great little bar. Uh, one of the things I really loved about that bar was uh, Tuesday night trivia. Uh, Another uh, comedian, Teague Hayes. I don't know. Yeah, I know Teague. Yeah, Teague uh, hosted the uh, the uh, trivia nights. Uh, He did sort of a Jeopardy style, uh, having all sorts of categories and any two rounds of two rounds of them and uh, any any questions that were not used uh, that week, he would uh, recycle for uh, future. That's awesome. Yeah, right. I've uh, been doing stand-up comedy in Kansas City for mm-hmm. about, I think it would be four years now. Oh, sweet. And uh, a couple of years back, me and my wife produced a comedy uh, 
comedy special web series pretty much called Laugh ABC. Mm-hmm. And we had Teague on our show. And it's pretty much, it's show with six comedians doing 15 minutes each. And we filmed them with a four camera setup. They're on our YouTube. And it was just a way for us to display some of the amazing stand-up comedy talent that's here in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. So you can go watch all those. There's Brandon Patrick's on it. Uh, Bryce Stanley, Nick Nichols, lots of great local comedians are on there. Cool. So, so yeah, what T would do with the uh, trivia nights? Uh, uh, yeah, two rounds. Pick a eight hey, you um, You've got a question wrong. It'll go at large to everyone for half the points. Or if you didn't know the answer, you could uh, sloppy second the uh, question to another player. If you got it wrong, they got double points for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, that happened to me uh, quite a bit, actually. So uh, yeah, sloppy <laughs> seconds to Mike. Yeah, Mike, you've been sloppy second. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Said exactly like that. You've been sloppy second. Da, 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 da. Of course, the best thing about that, that, that I'm thinking about it, the best thing about that, if you didn't know an answer and uh, didn't want to sloppy second anyone, you'd, uh, we always had the uh, joke answer, uh, Michael Ironside, as our uh, joke answer. <laughs> but don't know the answer? Michael Ironside. Yeah. Who invented the wheel? Michael Ironside. <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah fun times fun times again too bad it's uh, closed now so. uh, yeah oh. so uh, hmm. well, yeah, feel free to ask I questions of me too you know some so. things like that at bars yeah. and comedy yeah. clubs yeah yeah, fine. I last actually, I saw Teague uh, as when I was starting this podcast. I, I um, had the idea of approaching Teague about doing it. Uh, hasn't happened yet, but Teague, if you're listening or watching, uh, you're more well. I, I would love to have you on the podcast at some point. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a good guy, and lots he's of good people. Lots of good people uh, at that bar. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, like I said, uh, feel free to ask me questions uh, too. So then, yeah, definitely keep this going we'll for at least another half hour. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I was wondering, have we ever met in an IFC meeting before? Do you know? I don't think so. I know we're Facebook friends, but I don't think we've actually met in person. So. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny, those people that you can know through like Facebook and like, oh yeah, they're at all the same things I'm at, but I've never actually Mm -hmm. met them face to face, you know? Yeah. Cause there are, there are so many people in this scene that are doing incredible stuff. And I'm like, how have I not met you yet? Mm -hmm. You know? Right. Yep. Another person I've worked with a lot is uh, Baron Michael Redman. I don't know if you've worked with him in the past. I've heard the name, but I don't think I've ever actually met him. Yeah, yeah. I worked with him on his series Captives for a while. Um, I also helped him with, I was, I, I'm in his short film, Seven Minutes, which is up on YouTube. That was a really fun filmmaking experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I was tied to a chair for the entire process. Oh, wow. Uh, and the fun thing about being tied to a chair while acting is at one point I was supposed to like fall kind of dead. And when I went limp, I knocked the whole chair over with me, mm-hmm. but I was tied to it. So I couldn't like stand up or I just had to fall to the ground. And it, it was definitely painful, I'll say. <laughs> the sacrifices will make for art though, you know, who, who cares? Yeah. What's a bruise or two for a fun short film? Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. So are you mostly a uh, actor or do you do a lot of I'm a behind the camera guy mostly. Uh, okay. What kind of stuff? Well, I'll do camera work is my uh, forte. Uh, I'll also 
screen rights and the edit and awesome uh, i i have done some acting um but i don't consider myself an actor right. got it definitely yeah yeah i do i do it all because as an indie filmmaker there's that you kind of have to yeah need to do <laughs> yeah exactly um i i always joke i would love to quit editing i'm just it's not my thing. I've done a lot of it, but I would love to not have to edit anymore. If I never had to again, I'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, editing's fun. Well, it's also a lot of hard work. So. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's tedious and it doesn't uh, creatively fulfill me like acting or camera opping or directing or writing does. So it's just one of the things that I need to do to get a product out and whenever I can get my wife to do it, I do. Yeah. She's, she, her name is Lola Loren and she's an amazing editor, filmmaker, cinematographer, writer, director as well, and actress, so. All right, yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, it's pretty much, pretty much goes with the territory of being indie is, yeah, do, gotta do it all. Yep, yeah, definitely. And you, you said you went to JUCO? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I went to JUCO a couple times, and uh, my uh, bachelor's is from UMKC. Oh, okay, in, in film. Uh, actually, it's a business degree. Okay, nice. But, but interestingly enough, uh, one of my professors there, probably a name you're familiar with, Stephen Prutt. Yeah, I know yeah, Stephen. He, he teaches finance at UMKC. So. Or, or he a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. I so I've heard. Yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, the the year he showed the tree at the Kansas City Film Festival, I was screening, uh, adaption of William Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream that me and my wife made. All right, cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah, Pratt taught uh, finance at least when I was there, and I did take his class, of course, and. Uh, well, I will always remember about that class is he graded on just two tests, the yeah. midterm and the final. And uh, and uh, in that class, there were just a lot of formulas that you had to uh, write down. And uh, he allowed a, a cheat sheet, one cheat sheet with all the uh, formulas and everything. It all gets jumbled after a while. So, yeah. you can, so you can imagine uh, I didn't do too well in that class. <laughs> Got a D. I don't, I don't think I would either. I'm not, uh, I'm not much of a math mm -hmm. guy. I'm more of an arts guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing about being a, a filmmaker. You kind of have to be a math guy as well. So. Yeah, I, I definitely. One part art, to, one part uh, business, one part um, tech. I think. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we definitely have the difficulty as indie filmmakers of needing to both be the creative mm -hmm. and also the promoter of all of our own creative stuff. Like we have to run our own social media department, which is a thing that many people do as a job. We just have to do to get by, yeah. which is just crazy to me. All the stuff mm -hmm. that we're willing to do and the stuff that we do do and all the work we do yeah yeah and some some people myself included were just bad at the marketing type type stuff and bad at the fundraising type stuff too so. <laughs> yeah yeah i i mean i definitely what i'll do is i'll get spurts of like all right i'm gonna be really good at instagram this week and I'll post on Instagram a bunch that week and be like, oh, I'm getting followers. And then I get burnt out on trying so hard at social media. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I just kind of quit. And then I sit there like, why isn't it working? Well, it's because you're not putting the work into it. And then I get really excited again for a week and then I burn out. So it's, mm -hmm. it is tough doing that social media aspect of this job. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Fundraising. Uh, yeah. That's kind of an important thing for what we do. And that is something I am God awful at. Um, it is so hard. Yeah. 
have you tried a large fundraising campaign or yes i have and i <laughs> uh, got like 30 bucks off of it i've i've done a couple that were like that and then for our most recent feature film almost sort of maybe previously titled the way it goes uh, uh we successfully raised a good amount of money and it was the first time i've ever done that and to do it you really truly have to run it like it's your full-time job doing that fundraising campaign which is hard because you're also trying to do art and do social media and do probably uh, at least a part-time job to get by and do your freelance work and yep. it's difficult it it's is really especially difficult. if you have a, a job that uh, takes you away from the creative stuff so yeah. yeah yeah definitely i've had the blessing of going back and forth between having to mm -hmm. need a part-time job to enhance the amount of money i'm making from freelance work this past year was obviously nearly impossible as a yeah. freelancer yep it's been it's been crazy mm -hmm. how have you done through the uh, pandemic creatively um well uh, aside from doing the podcasts and uh, i think i did do a short video about what i've been doing in the pandemic um i've been uh, doing doordash as a as a uh, minor result of doing of uh, doing the podcast. Uh, so I had uh, a couple of guys I used to work with named uh, Luke and Dan, who have been on the podcast a couple of times, including last year's friend, actually. Uh, but the uh, first time I had them on the podcast, uh, we were talking about ways that we could make extra money. And uh, Luke brought up uh, DoorDash. And, I, and uh, a couple of weeks later, I sign up with them and uh that's how i'm uh, making my money right now yeah i've I've done doordash i did postmates for a bit mm -hmm. um, i'm currently doing a part-time retail job one of my main goals of 2021 is to quit having a job and just go back to freelance art but we'll yeah, see right. if that happens right. and uh and also i'm a part-time uh, chess instructor Oh yeah? Yeah. That's cool. I used to be in the chess club in like grade school and then my high school didn't really have one and mm -hmm. I wish I played more chess. Yeah. Yeah. And I get plenty of times to do that on um, Monday and Friday nights if I so choose. Um, we've been doing uh, <laughs> online, we've been doing online tournaments uh, um, on uh, Mondays and Fridays. The cool thing about doing them online is they're truly international. We've got uh, international masters from Mexico joining us for those. That's awesome. Yeah. What does it take to become a chess master? A very, very high rating. I, I, okay. uh, I, I'm going to look this up. I'm not 100% sure what the rating is for, say, a grandmaster, which is of course, the uh, highest possible uh, ranking in chess. There. So I'm looking that up. I do that. What's this? Uh, current regulations. Uh, 2,500 you need to be for a grandmaster. So what's that rating? Where does that number come from? I'm not 100% sure. Um, um, okay, all, okay. All I know is my uh, current rating is way below 2,500. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's okay. I don't have a rating. So yeah. you can just uh, call me a zero and that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. How'd you get into chess? Well, well I got into chess because uh, I'm also a, a, a board gamer. And uh, one of the people I board game with uh, was uh, uh, involved with the uh, chess club. And uh, so, uh, hey, I'm needing uh, some part-time employment. And he said, uh, yeah, so this is who you talk to. And 
that's how I got that's how I got the job and uh, that was back in the 20 December 2016 was the uh, interview and January 2017 is when I actually started and it's mostly yeah, going into elementary schools and not exclusively but mostly elementary schools and uh, teaching kids how to play chess there yeah that sounds like that'd be fun to to pass that skill on and to mm -hmm. teach that critical thinking of chess is yeah and my game has gotten a lot better uh, as a as a uh, instructor too so yeah. oh i'm sure yeah yeah the more you play it the more you look at it the more you think about it the better you get at anything yep yeah. Yep, that's true in chess and in uh, the uh, creative arts too. So. Definitely, yeah. That's the one of the things like during this pandemic, like not being able to do as much creativity. Sorry, my cat's trying to destroy the. <laughs> um, but not being able to do as much creatively, like there was a bit of a worry of like, well, I remember how to film it like will i be able to do this skill still and i think i have me and my wife we made a sketch show called sketchy af it's up on our youtube and we did that mostly during the pandemic we made i think four or five new sketches and it was nice exercising that creative muscle and be like okay i can do this cool Coo, coo, coo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, yeah doing some more creative stuff in the coming uh, months. And well, that's including doing more of these interviews. So. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I really hope that this like vaccine rolls out soon because I really missed acting in other people's things that's something yeah. i really realized during this time is that like i love acting i identify as a stand-up comic i want to be doing more stand-up i want to do more acting like that's the things i want to be spending my time doing and there were just two things i couldn't do this year mm -hmm. yep yep and it's funny funny we're talking you mentioned vaccines. I'm, I guess I'm one of the next in line because of doing DoorDash to get it. We shall see. I know I'm going, oh, nice. to, I know I'm going to need it uh, before I can uh, go into a classroom again. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are you a uh, Kansas or Missouri side? Just curious. Overland Park. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm Shawnee actually. All right, so, so I, we're, we're in the same neighborhoods almost. Almost, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm uh, just down the street from downtown Overland Park, if that helps. So, so we're like the Rio Theater. Yeah, and yeah I, I know Coffee. exactly where that is. Yeah, just down the street. The drink. Yeah, that, that's a great that's a great part of town. That's a really cool area, I yeah. think. Yeah, it's um, it's been uh, uh, there's controversy to it, but I think uh, it's been uh, partially revitalized the last few years um, with all the uh, mixed use and uh, mini high rise stuff going on there now. Um, yeah. 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 There's a lot of new stuff over there that I've never checked out, but I should go, should go yeah. look into. Yeah. I just entered uh, one of those new buildings for the first time uh, yesterday. Uh, doing a, uh, oh, wow. Doing a DoorDash. Yeah. And uh, that uh, was one of the things I really liked when I was doing the driving delivery stuff was seeing different parts of town and being like, oh, this is, a cool area I didn't know existed, you know? Yeah. 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 We got plenty of, uh, yeah, plenty of cool stuff all around, all around town. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. If, do you do what I do? And that's whenever you're like driving around, you're kind of always in the back of your head thinking of like spots you could film. You're like, oh, that looks really cool for this thing I'm thinking about. Or uh, sometimes, yeah, yeah. Then what could uh, work with this film idea that I have uh, going on and anything? And uh, where could I uh, find? Yeah, all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, uh, the, uh, like for example, the photo that I kind of use uh, as my uh, promo stuff for the podcast. Downtown Liberty is where I, where I took that uh, photo. There's, right. Yeah, that there's an actual statue of uh, Mark Twain uh, right across from. Uh, it's uh, right across from City Hall, there in the police station. Uh, in the corner of a parking lot is where you'll find that. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, and the reason for that is the uh, chess club that I've been work working at uh, for most most of my time at the chess club. Our office was on Library Square, and uh, parking is okay. usually at premium, so we just use that free parking lot right there and walk a couple of blocks to the club. And then pre-pandemic, we had just moved our office to uh, Northgate C, but uh, Shoto and I-35, little office building there, uh, which I liked, but uh, we shall see what happens uh, from this point. Um, I liked A because, uh, again, free parking and uh, B, a lot more room. As much yeah, as, yeah. and uh, see less of a drive. So, yep. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the chess club. That's um, our our clubs are uh, all over the metro, really. And uh, I've had uh, clubs as far east as Blue Springs, as far north as uh, Platte City. So. So uh, wow. yeah, so yeah, driving is just um, just uh, works well, it's especially since I'm still paying that car off. <laughs> so yeah. All right. So that was um, something I visited. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, what were you going to say? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I've. I, I visited uh, L.A. about, I guess it would be almost two years ago now. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, like oh, you're going to hate it. You have to drive everywhere. And honestly, knowing that you have to drive everywhere and that like the waits are going to be long in traffic, it didn't mm -hmm. feel that much different than being stuck on I-35 here sometimes. And I was like, this feels like home. I'm fine with this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is that is true there it's kind of a requirements here as well that you have to drive. Yeah. So, um, no, I've never yeah. been to LA, but that could change, uh, once everything's, uh, back to normal ish. Uh, uh, we shall, we shall see. But, uh, yeah, the furthest West I've ever been was, uh, San Antonio. Yeah, I'd, I'd never really gone west before either. And mm -hmm. then I did, me and my wife did a road trip a couple of years ago. I think it was two years ago now mm -hmm. to go check out kind of LA, see the area, like see what we thought about right. the idea of it or whatnot, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. How's well, there? Um, well, I guess uh, there's uh, nothing else in. We want to bring up. Uh, I I do want to ask you to uh, pimp your stuff. You know your uh, YouTube and all that. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So you can find my stuff at YouTube.com/ixfp. So those are the initials for IX Film Productions. So mm -hmm. YouTube.com/ixfp. Um, on like Apple Podcasts or any of those things, you can look up First Timers Movie Club. 
That's the podcast with me and my wife. We're going to start having guests as soon as it's really safe to have guests on to show us movies that neither of us had seen before. Mm -hmm. Or maybe like we just had our first guest because she's a member of our pod and one of our filmmaking uh, com compatriots. Is that the right mm -hmm. word? Um, <laughs> but uh, we showed her Citizen Kane for the first time recently. So you can go find First Timers Movie Club pretty much wherever you find podcasts. Mm -hmm. Please like, review, subscribe it. Indies on Indies, the other podcast. And uh, go like us at facebook.com slash Productions. That'd be awesome. All right. So, yeah, I will definitely check those out myself. And I encourage our audience, uh, both Fringe and just listening, to check out Patrick's stuff as well. So, all right. Well, if there's thank nothing you else, so I want to, yeah, thank you for uh, coming on, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to collaborate on something else here in the near future, and uh, you know how to get in touch with me. All right. Yeah, it's been great getting to know you. Thank you. Yeah, same here. Pacific echoes